Welcome to Decades of Horror, the classic era. I'm a doctor, Colonel, not a detective. There's nothing like this in your little book, is it, Spock? Spock! <laughs> Spock! This is episode 166, recorded December 3rd, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. And I want everybody to know we are recording on the day we originally scheduled. <laughs> Maybe not the time. I'll be a, I'll be a little late. <laughs> Yay! My, us. Name is, my name is Jeff Moore. On this he podcast, we cover the good, the bad, maybe even the ugly horror films released since the beginning of time through 1969. In each episode, we'll discuss the monster spirits, psychos, and villains that have haunted movie-going audiences since the dawn of film history. You said a mouthful, brother. With me this week are my incredible co-ghosts. Chad Hunt, co-host on the other decades of horrors, 70s and 80s, film producer, director with Three Havoc Productions, and a comic book artist and writer. Chad, how are you, my friend? I feel like I've had my brain sucked out today. <laughs> from the back. Really? Yeah, from the back, yeah. <laughs> from the back. Isn't that just yeah. the way it, life does you? Everything I know. Everything gets pulled it out just, from the back. It just happens. <laughs> Also with us is Daphne, who is awesome, stupendous, and like it was hell. Daphne, how you doing? Hi, guys. I'm doing real good. I'm doing really okay. good. I think I still have my brains intact, but I'm not sure. I'll try my we'll, best. We'll let you know later. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Doc Rotten could not be with us for this episode, but speaking of, we didn't have a ringer. <laughs> Dave Dreher, one of the OG HNR folks, is with us. Dave, how you doing? Hey, guys. Always look forward to getting it. It's been a while since I got to hang with you three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember what the last one we did was. War of the Worlds, maybe? I think it might have been War yes. of the Worlds. Yes. Yeah. It was War yeah. of the Worlds. Forever ago. Forever uh, ago. You know, a while ago, I, I uh, asked, we asked Dave to join us and pick a, a thing and he said i want to do either return of the vampire or return of dracula return or of dracula. Uh, get it right fiend without the, <laughs> the face and uh here we are yes. fiend yeah, without yeah. A face. and All we did do there. we did do the return of dracula um okay just uh to get this in and thank our partners uh we partner with play now media on several of their channels. The Classic Era is on the Sci-Fi Movie Channel, the Classic Sci-Fi Movie Channel, the Classic Horror Movie Channel, and the Wicked Horror TV Channel. Uh, all of our episodes are on there, starting with episode 91 when we went video. So check us out there and check out all of their content. I watch stuff there all the time. Yeah, and I should be writing them down so I can tell you what they are. But I didn't pull them up. So at any rate, uh, check out Play Down Media. You can you can watch some stuff for free uh, with commercials. Other stuff is premium only, uh, for which you'd have to subscribe. So uh, check that stuff out. So spoiler alert. Again, we're doing a movie that's math live, sixty five <laughs> years old, <laughs> and uh, so if you haven't seen this, you should run now and watch this there are decent copies on uh, youtube and i think on criterion channel but don't uh, run you might hurt yourself at any rate our movie this episode is fiend without a face from 1958 directed by arthur crabtree written the screenplay written by herbert j leader from a story by Amelia Reynolds titled The Thought Monster, which appeared in the March 1930 issue of Weird Tales. The cast includes Marshall Thompson, Kim Parker, Terry Kilburn, Keniston Reeves, and E. Kerrigan Prescott. Uh, the production company, producers, uh, <laughs> producers, associates, and amalgamated products or productions. I, anyway, this th that was a weird <laughs> thing because it says right on the movie when it starts up, Amalgamated Productions. 
Yes, it does. It's a very so it is thing. credited. So <laughs> producers associates is not on there anywhere. So that's the one that should be uncredited. Uh, and either way, both those companies are the same guys. They just oh, the changed, internet <laughs> changed their company names. Anyway, uh, let's see. Filmed in England in Black Park, Ivor Heath, and Nettlefold Studios and Walton Studios and Walton on Thames. Filming dates September 1957. It had a three week shooting schedule. Release date May 29th, 1958. The budget 80,000 pounds. Now, IMDb says 50,000 pounds, but on the uh, there is a criterion DVD, and on there, uh, the producer says, Yeah, it was 50,000, but then it, we had overruns for the special effects and stuff. So, anyway, box office 650,000. It was on a double bill with The Haunted Strangler starring Boris Karloff. So that was their split of the of the take there. The synopsis, a scientist's thoughts materialize as an army of invisible brain-shaped monsters complete with spinal cord tails terrorize an American military base. And I'll this say. is one of the one of the early victims uh, a farmer who all he wants is to eat his breakfast <laughs> after his wife feeds the chickens. Uh, and there he lays <laughs> next to his wife. I mean, this this movie doesn't waste any time. The first nope. kill is less than two minutes into the movie. Mm -hmm. You start off with some nice calming jet trails through the sky, and then all of a sudden, much, much, much. All right. He's laying next to his wife who was face up when she died, but then she was face down. Then she was face down, yeah. yeah. Continuity was not a big thing in the 50s. No. <laughs> well, especially not. It. This, was, this, was a, they, this company shot both those movies. The uh, What did I say was the name of the... Uh, the Haunted Strangler. The Haunted Strangler. Yeah. The Haunted Strangler. They filmed them consecutively. And use mostly the same crew, different different director and writer. But uh, uh, the the Haunted Stranger was supposed to be the big budget one. By the time uh, Fiend without a, Fiends without a Face was done, it had a, roughly the same budget. All right, uh, let's see. On this podcast, we start by giving some basic details, which we just did, and then we move on to first impressions and taglines and then we just kind of take off down the road chit chatting it up you know that's what we do and this one is chosen by chad so chad what were your first impressions of this when did you first see this oh i've, I've seen it quite a few times over the years <clears throat> um, i just love the uh, uh i love the creatures i just love them um I enjoy the whole scene. Are we doing? We can do spoilers, right? This movie's like yeah, yeah. twenty-five years old. Um, the whole scene where they're shooting the creatures and they bubble, the, the brains just go. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's just amazing. Yeah. It's just great. <laughs> it's yeah, great. It I, is. Love it. I love it. It is, and uh, you know, it's that kind of stuff. Just, just gets me. I love that kind of stuff, and it's a great, it's a great idea behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, a thought thought monster, thoughts materializing into into these little creepy things. It, it's um, it's something that screams uh, weird tales or the old pulp. Uh, oh yeah, magazines. Yep. You know uh, that idea, and uh, so that's that's why I love it so much. I guess because I enjoy those old pulp stories and and, and stuff like that. And this just um, it had good characters, good good monster action. Um, good amount of gore i thought for for the time uh, with the little oh, rain, yeah absolutely the rains there and um so yeah this is this is one of my favorites i always enjoy watching so i still feel that way today all righty well we'll go with our guests next dave i'm a so guest why did you pick this as the one you wanted to have what, what are your first impressions etc uh, this was kind of one of those gateway movies for me. I mean, this came, I think I seen this when I was like eight or nine years old. 
Uh, it, it aired on, you know, one of those Saturday afternoon uh, horror host shows that uh, uh, that used to play. I'm sure they have played in your guys' area as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I've seen this as uh, relatively young. And for whatever reason, my little young pea brain, as opposed now to my older elderly pea brain, <laughs> I, I thought for sure that back behind a mall we had here in town was uh, a complex. It actually kind of looked like a military complex, but it looked to eight-year-old me uh, just like this complex that was behind this mall. And I knew for a fact that that's where they shot this this movie. It was back there behind this mall. <laughs> I, you, no one was going to convince me otherwise. The place still stands; it's still there. Uh, so, but you know, that stuck with me through my entire life. Obviously, now I realize that they did not shoot the movie there. But, uh, but it probably made snots there. <laughs> but um, you know, as I've gotten older and rewatched it, it's just with a kind of a of a with a great fondness. But uh, you know, there's a reason it's part of the Criterion Collection, and it, at the end of the day, it's really just a really well crafted. Uh, film it really is you know at the beginning they make great use of not having a monster at all people just grasp their neck and fall down <laughs> you know it's like oh that's yeah saved a lot of money there i suppose but when they we finally do see the monsters they're actually kind of horrific and then like uh chad did with his wonderful impression there when they start killing them they just kind of uh uh you know spitter out upon themselves uh it was just there's a lot of fun it kind of came at the around the same time or towards the end of the big bug movies it still got that kind of big bug movie feel you know atomic powers destroying us all and you know it's creating these creatures and um you know so it, it still kind of got kind of that fun feel like them did or a tarantula or any of those um but with, with a little bit of uh gore so yeah, it's a fun movie. It's still to the, I, I I was smiling ear to ear watching this the other night. That's yeah. It. All right. Uh, <laughs> Daphne, what about you? Uh, I hadn't seen it before. Um, awesome. I think I I think I had heard Dave talk about it, but um, oh my god, I loved it. It was so much fun, and I um, I never wanted a drone before, but I would love to put a brain and a spinal cord, fake of, <laughs> fake of course, um, onto a drone and just drive it around. I was trying to come up with cosplay ideas, but then I was just like, oh, but if it was on a drone, I just was in love with those guys, and um, I agree. The kind of I loved the kind of oogie ooey, ooey gooey gloopy stuff that was happening or when they got shot and um it was just a really cozy i just felt really good as soon as it started i loved the beginning how quiet it was just it was so quiet and um just kind of lulls you into the the being alone and then um you know the screaming and the weird noises and the dead guy all of a sudden it was it was great and um i really thought that um this made me think a lot about stuff like, um, well, it made me think of Frankenstein, and it made me think about how awesome exploitation movies and horror movies are because they totally took this, like, the story that this great story and put it, made it more a little bit more modern and put a exploitation sci-fi B movie spin on it, and um, but I loved the the doctor and how he was like Frankenstein and trying to, you know, do all these things. I, I just thought it was really fun. And I think it's a great, great movie. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, this is a great movie. And I had forgotten how great it is. It's one of those movies that if you don't know anything about it and you watch any little piece of like the first 30 minutes, you're going to be going, Oh, how lame is this? The yeah. monsters are invisible, <laughs> and people mm -hmm. just grab their neck and scream. Mm -hmm. That's one of those things we used to we said about uh, what was the other one we did, Chad? Invisible invaders. It's mm -hmm. like if you're if you have yeah. a super low budget, just just make the invaders invisible. <laughs> yeah, or if you're eight oh, years yeah. old and you <laughs> you have no budget for your playtime. <laughs> That's right. That's it's an right. invisible gorilla. <laughs> um. <laughs> What is the one? Have you seen the trailer to that movie, Imaginary? Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. 
when you're Sean, Sean was sitting with me yesterday when I was watching we were watching uh, the new Godzilla and he's yeah, watching yeah. he's watching that thing club closer and closer and it jumps at the screen and he he, he jumped back he must have jumped five feet out of his chair and, uh, <laughs> and everybody and then he started laughing because he got scared mm -hmm. so bad mm -hmm. so, everybody, so everybody had a good laugh yeah uh, in the theater. yes anyway you... back to the movie we're talking about uh, so anyway, I but when you watch the whole thing, especially where that last like twenty minutes, fifteen minutes of that movie is just it's just nonstop, and and you're right, Chad. For the time, that was a heck of a lot of you know it's black and white. So is it gore? I, I don't know, but yeah, they shot him right there, or maybe it was uh, Daphne that said that. For that time period, it was nasty, and a lot of the papers and columns attacked it. You know, especially in Britain. It was filmed in Britain, but then mostly played over in the U.S. I think nobody had any problems with it in the U.S., I guess. Uh, Maybe that's And the producer didn't the care. They asked him, but what did you care? What did you think when you were getting all the these bloppy. nasty comments? I thought it was the, uh -oh. I, couldn't, I couldn't pay for that much publicity. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I love it. I love I love the monsters. I love the whole idea. I love fiends without a face. I mean, what a title! What a title! Uh, and the, Marshall Thompson is a guy I was always aware of. He was one of those, uh, you know, popular guest stars on all the TV shows in the fifties and the sixties mm -hmm. and stuff. So we can talk a little bit about him later. But I I thought it was great, and you know, it had some some pretty cool effects on there. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, you know what? I think we should move straight from here to uh, over already. A we done? thing <laughs> we do called uh, <laughs> taglines with Chad. Oh, it, it is, is it? Okay. <laughs> Ooh, that's a lot of them, Chad. Yeah, this 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 has. <laughs> Oh my God! And I, I didn't even translate any. How much? <laughs> <laughs> and they're mostly in caps. You can do it. So it's going to be awesome. Okay. Lots of caps. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> the Patreons are going. <laughs> oh my God! Naughty. <laughs> okay. New horrors. Mad science spawns evil fiends. Taking form before your horrified eyes. Okay, on to the next one. <laughs> that happened. That happened. <laughs> New horror thriller. Some of these I can I can put together like New okay. Horror Thriller. Science gone wild. Will men of the future become fiends? That's an odd See, one. I think I could just and I don't know what that gotta do with anything. <laughs> <laughs> Men versus monsters, science gone wild. See, Jeff, you got to do something about these double dipping uh, <laughs> taglines here. It had a different intro. I'm sorry. I, just... <laughs> I forgot I'm dealing with Jeff. Uh, mad scientist spawns evil blood sucking horror monster. Are there different kinds of monsters? That I don't know, but it seems like one too many monster. adjectives there, doesn't it? Evil yeah. blood. Blood-sucking, sensitive monster. Uh, monsters and madness. Okay. <laughs> Out of the atomic void they came. Invisible, deadly, cunning beyond human understanding. Ooh. All of them. Every single one of them. MGM presents the brain monsters who feed on human souls. Souls. I don't remember no. seeing that, that a, at all. That was another level. <laughs> Brains and spines. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> mad science spawns evil shapes of brain sucking monsters. See, that's another one. Evil. I, just, I swear I read that already. <laughs> no. Well, mad science and uh, brain sucking monsters appear all throughout. But <laughs> you're, you're suspect, Jeff. You're, you're suspect for this one. <sighs> Laboratory genius. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just switch them, switch out descriptions of this mad scientist laboratory genius gone wild produces the creature of the future 
a fiend without a face. <sighs> Today's science spawns evil monsters of horror and, and, <laughs> and such stuff as that. Okay. A top secret experiment goes drastically wrong. A new horror is unleashed. It sure did. It you sure know that, that did. creature of the future, a fiend without a face, I, I heard they were adding that to the census data. You know. <laughs> You're trolling everybody now. <laughs> trolling everybody. Oh, God. And that's been... Now come in and watch Chad read the same line over and over and over again, but in different words. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Best part of the whole podcast. <laughs> and it is. And that's been Taglines with Chad. If I wasn't so handsome, Chad. I'd hate having to see that every week. <laughs> <laughs> it is a it is a good looking thing. Okay, so <laughs> good looking thing. So posters. Posters. We well, got posters. Look, why is she just now, wearing a bath towel? She had a yes. towel on for one yeah. scene. One scene, one but scene. not one <laughs> second, even like <laughs> for the poster, though. Come on, I know. no, that's what I mean. It's like out of everything, one scene, they go with the towel. <laughs> oh my gosh! And I guess is that a is that a printing thing that they do those two tone ones like in that bottom mm -hmm. poster that's. It's, it's sort cheaper. Of a faded peach and a turquoise <laughs> yeah. on the one side. And the less yeah. colors, the cheaper it is to print them. So I guess that's why it. even put anything in there. I, <laughs> I guess that dresses it up some, but that's not a bad poster. I mean, the brain thing—you just you wonder what in the hell is that? Mm -hmm. You know, kind of looks like a snail with a tail there. <laughs> it makes me think of that um, cartoon guy, the Martian. I don't know what his first name was. Marvin. 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 <laughs> Marvin. From the back. The plutonium P-32 space modulator has been destroyed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that is they a great picture. It, they should have called it friend without a face. A heartwarming <laughs> tale. <laughs> Society looked down on their friendship. Family bonding. Um... <laughs> All right, a couple more, just different layouts, you know, the same. What image. is that, like I, a know, radar dish on top? Think of that. I kind of dig the uh, yeah. the lightning lightning bolt letters in Fiend and Face. Mm -hmm. That does look good. All right, here's a uh, DVD a cover. <laughs> So Why good. is Frankenstein being choked by a brain? With a I don't know. I guess those are thought waves going out. And... <laughs> beep, 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 oh, yeah, the radar, the radar waves were a big thing. That's why at the beginning, you know, all we see are the satellite things. Spinning. Oh, that's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah, the radar waves. And then I'm just telling you, don't use blue font on purple backgrounds. It just purple, doesn't purple, show purple, up. Purple swirly background. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to read. Anyway. That, oh, that's actually not, I, I think I said DVD. That's a VHS box cover. Uh, and then we have a couple of uh, foreign posters. The German, Ungeheuer on a Gesicht. Hold on, everyone. <laughs> the white towel that turned green. <laughs> and that stands for uh, monster without a face. You, you could say fiend, I think. Um, I thought it and, said, <laughs> I'm in here. So I, I, I put this in. Uh, this is, uh, it doesn't have the accent over the Atomico, Atomico, or whatever. So it doesn't, I don't know. When I put this in the translator, it came out both Italian and Spanish. But basically the, uh, the Atomic Vampire, obviously. Uh, in French, it was Le Monstre Invisible, Invisible, <laughs> the Invisible Monsters. See, now this is my favorite uh, part of the show when you're trying to uh, translate all these posters. I, yeah, I'm just making up. I'm just making up <laughs> pronunciations. And it still doesn't sound French. <laughs> uh, but again, Germans go different. You know, Monster <laughs> Without a Face. There's no monster, 
and the girl in the towel, it looks like there's three leering men <laughs> after the woman in the towel. Is one guy shooting her? <laughs> <laughs> Go put the green towel back on. Is she the, is she the monster? I don't know. All right, and then uh, some ads for that for that double feature. I don't think I've oh, ever seen that right. Karloff movie. That's a good. That's pretty good. That's is it. It's pretty good. More of a like a noir mystery thing, or what? sort of. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly. He's a doctor that is trying to find. I think he's trying to find a serial killer is green town and uh spoiler alert <laughs> it's him so, <gasps> but he's this kindly doctor and then uh, whenever he gets this certain knife or scalpel in his hand he's he gets, you know, it's all. but it's it's decent uh so nice nice little you know they make they 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 highly profile uh Karloff's face and the brains, but this one also has a woman that seems to be, I don't know, partially undressed. There's like a triangle over her breasts. I, I don't know. Like she's holding her panties in front of her breasts. It seems she's like definitely it. Uh, being molested in some way. Yeah, that doesn't happen. I mean, you may. can't help it. The big screens are on the big. We gotta screen. sell this picture, boys. <laughs> well, that's what happened with the girl in the towel. The, yeah. the producer said MGM did the distribution out, which they thought was a big coup that MGM didn't normally do independent stuff. Uh, but once M MGM got it, they're like girl in the towels going in the advertising yeah. campaign. <laughs> Whether you girl want it towel or not. in, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> there's really no other reason for that scene to even be in the movie. Well, no, he I also mean, said that there's not really any reason for that scene to be in the movie, <laughs> except to take, except to have her on the poster. Poster, like. yeah. Oh man. Yeah, and I don't know. Isn't that when the <laughs> the local the local constable on the the border between the United States and Canada, who has a mm -hmm. Scottish accent, comes in and calls uh, him? Yes. Accuses him of tomcatting around. <laughs> tomcatting around. Yeah. <laughs> so. Tom anyway, around. Uh, <laughs> and then they that should have been a tag on in the face. Yes, that would have been Watch a great Watch Mad Scientist Town Cat around. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, American military Town Cat around. I would have bought that. Um, so we've got uh, the director is Arthur Crabtree, and interestingly enough, at least to me. His other horror effort is Horrors of the Black Museum. Yeah, that's a good one. Which we did about a year, a little over a year ago with uh, Stephen mm -hmm. Turek from mm -hmm. Diecast Movie Podcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the screenplay is by Herbert J. Leader, who also did, we will have done all three of his horror movies. Mm -hmm. uh, the Frozen Dead, which is about uh, a mad scientist. Dana Andrews, who's a German doctor who's trying to figure out how to unfreeze these Nazis they've had frozen for 20 years. Now, why would you want to do something stupid like that? I don't know. Well, it's, 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 sort, <laughs> it's kind of like Boys from Brazil, only in the deep freeze, you know. Uh, if I saw a block full then, of frozen Nazis, I'd just go, hmm, and keep walking. Well, and it was one of our very first episodes it was in the first 10 i don't remember what number yeah. it was it roddy was a McDowell. joseph perry pick uh mm -hmm. roddy mcdowell and a a weird golem that looks like a tree or a pencil <laughs> that's been sharpened or something <laughs> um but it was it was a decent movie i like it roddy mcdowell went mad of course i love yeah, roddy yeah yeah i haven't seen it for a while um, but yeah, so that I, I just found that interesting, and I, mm -hmm. uh, I guess we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, Orders of the Black Museum, I see more and more stuff about that now. It's like 
getting talked about more. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, and uh, it, eh, not not quite as much, but I, I just found this interesting. It just is weird how we come across these people all of a sudden that we don't really mm -hmm. know that much about. It's also interesting that we'll cover movies like Horrors of the Black Museum, mm -hmm. and then a couple of weeks later, a week or two later, you'll see it pop up on other review channels and uh, covering it too. So that's always a good thing. Oh, right. Uh, the more right, word of right. these, these movies that get around, the better mm -hmm. off, I think. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yes, yes. Yeah, Roddy McDowell, he's quite the cad in that movie. I think I need to watch it again. <laughs> Roddy. Bullets can't kill it. <laughs> That's the one with the yeah, infamous uh, intro. With you can't park that here. There's going to be a golem coming through here in about ten minutes. You're going to get, get your car scratched up, or something like that. <laughs> Bullets can't kill it. Fire can't burn it. Water can't drown it. How can we destroy it before it destroys us? And Jill, Jill Howarth is a knockout. Yeah, she's good in that. Although she did say somebody gave her a poster of that and she wrote SH on, in front of it. Yeah. It was one of her favorite <laughs> movie experiences. <laughs> All right. We, oh, that's go funny. back and listen to that episode, whatever episode that was. Uh, it's in the audio podcast. Um, but did, anyway, so I did read the, uh, the Thought Monster. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty short. It's like, I don't know, seven to ten pages, something like that. And uh, I can't wait for retirement. <laughs> <Yeah>. Me too. <laughs> Jeff gets to do so, all the cool stuff now. <laughs> so the story is is roughly the same, you know. Except the big thing that's different is you never get to see him. And they kill the monster with, they talk about violet light, kills huh. these strange creatures. Um, and they have the, uh, the scientist lures the monsters into this lead room and then turns on the ultraviolet lights. And then these other people, he's left a message for them and they come back and, uh, uh, when they open up the door to the lead room, he's like, he's like that Gibbons, the the constable, oh he's God. a gibbering idiot. That, that's, I was gonna, that's I was gonna put that in as a quote, yeah. but I couldn't, I yeah. didn't know how to spell that. Should have put it in as a picture. That Ooh. was the creepiest. Thing. That was disturbing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. was. Especially when I saw it as a kid, and he comes through the door going, "Oh, oh, oh, oh your car's ready!" No, it just, just well, and all the scared. all the noises before he comes down the hall. You're saying, yeah. "What is yeah. that?" Yeah. <laughs> well, I just I think it's cool. And so, in 1930, this uh, young woman, and how old was she then? I guess she was she was 26 then, or 25. She has a story published in Weird Tales, which she had several. And, oh, nice. Uh, she did like 20 some science fiction slash horror stories. She's in the pages of Weird Tales right along in that same episode. There's a story by H.P. Lovecraft, C. Barry Quinn, Gaston LaRoe, relatively famous writers. Mm -hmm. uh, and there she is. And then uh, in the 40s or so, she switched over to uh, mysteries and wrote like 30, or mis 30 mystery novels. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was cool. Cool. Yeah. Lovecraft like had a it. lot of uh, stories in there, weird tales. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he yeah. did. And his friends did two guys like Clark Ashton Smith and quite a bunch of them. Well, All righty. Uh, well, yeah, Reynolds Long. What did you say? I said I'm going to look her up. I'm going to see if I can read anything. Maybe read this story and also see what else she wrote. Yeah, and actually I discovered on archive.org you can find uh, – PDF versions of a lot of the issues of Weird Tales. Oh, cool. If anybody's fired up about that stuff, they can go check it out. I'm not sure if it's complete or not, but this one was there. So, all righty. Uh, so what, uh, let's say, do we have a, any comments about the directing and the, the writing? I thought it was written very well. I mean, the characters, uh, they seemed like real characters. Um, 
they, they didn't have that old 40s and 50s feel fast talking hey what's it bring me my laser gun right yeah. right now go tell jacko <laughs> to give me my laser gun you know that kind mm-hmm. of thing uh they spoke more like uh normal people um and yeah it was written very well it was paced very well and um it was shot well too i thought um uh the especially that scene where uh, gibbons comes through the door um yeah that was, that was just meant to terrify and and it did little chad was terrified when when kids <laughs> came through uh through that because i was like what's wrong with him you know um so yeah it was shot very well i thought too that even the stop motion uh i was it was for the time it looked pretty good i mean for what the budget was and what the movie was and everything um it did its job really well too. So it was well, pretty well crafted, and well done, well directed. Um, I think he did a great job. I also like the story. I thought, kind of like I said before, I like how it it kind of told the story, this kind of old story about you know hubris and stuff, but made it um, a more modern context. And I felt like the characters were believable. Um, and just like regular folks and, and, um, the, uh, this, the, also the reaction of the small town to the military and the kind of paranoia that, that was happening with that. Whereas the, while there was also people who thought, you know, thought it, their people were being, uh, not since it's very superstitious, but being small minded, small town kind of stuff. So I just I just liked how that was incorporated in a, in a really kind of um, believable way. Um, all these all these this whole situation is just totally normal life. <laughs> and then all of a sudden these people start dying and and, uh, you know, so I did like that kind of also about it and also the paranoid feel and stuff. I really was liking um, some of the shots um, during the climax when they were boarding up the windows and stuff. Um, it just made me think about okay. um, the the um, you know the the building of pressure like in um, Night of the Living Dead and just this kind of constant onslaught. I thought they did a really good job of it being like there's all these you know brains coming at them and they mm-hmm. they're just getting through little holes and it just I, I really got it you know into that and i thought they did a really good job with that and some of the scenes were were um shot really well and i really liked a lot of the the black and white of it i thought really kind of made gave it more of that feel yeah. i swear i could have seen this flippers. in color as some, some yeah maybe color, oh, colorized yeah. version i think if it's colorized yeah but i like the black and white mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And I was Dave, thinking, too, I was thinking, oh, sorry, oh, I was just thinking too, when they were shooting the brains, it was like, it made me think, oh, you know, about all the, the zombie lore about shooting, shooting the brain. And um, that's what you got to do to kill them. And I don't know, I just thought that made me think about that too. Yeah, that that's a real good point. I, I was going to say the exact same thing, because mm-hmm. it does kind of have that pre Night of the Living Dead feel with them mm-hmm. being holed up in, you know, this reclusive spot and uh, I don't think that freaked me out most was that the, the little things could fly. Yeah. Like, oh my God, they could fly. <laughs> Holy shit. You know, that, <laughs> flying brains can never be a good thing. And uh, my personal favorite, my personal favorite was the one that falls down through the chimney. I, I yeah. love, I love chimney, brain, I love chimney brain. That one. And you just kind of and it goes, da da. Yeah. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I also they like do, when right? they. I also like when they <laughs> would when it would keep crawling, like it would be shot, and you could just imagine it go, oh, as it would yeah. crawl for the last, you know, one <laughs> more try. <laughs> you got me, Earth creature. <laughs> I don't ever remember seeing a colorized version of this, but I, it would not surprise me if one existed somewhere. But I, I think it would lose its a, a lot of its uh, a lot of its appeal. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Well, the. Yeah, the producer said for a long time he wanted to do a remake with quality stuff, but he goes, he no longer feels that way because now it would just get totally out of yeah. control. But somebody, somebody, it'd be, bought the right it'd be all CGI, which he said, and then that, and that's no fun. <laughs> yeah, somebody, somebody bought the rights to it. Uh, another filmmaker here, and it's every now and then you'll hear murmurs that you know they're working oh, okay. on it or making it, but nothing ever comes said, from it. 
<laughs> he just said it was all remake. It's just going to be all CGI and, like... and, and uh, a lot more gory and all that stuff. So he, he just decided, nah, at some point. A wise yeah, choice, I think. I, I'm surprised. Um, yeah, I thought it was good writing, and I thought it was actually, for me anyway, they made that relationship between, uh, oh shoot, what was her name, Barbara Grizel, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Kim Parker, and Marshall Thompson, they kind of made that believable, you mm -hmm. know, how yeah. they started off kind of at odds, oh, wow. and then he makes a joke, and she softens up a little bit, and then, you know, uh, she yeah, defends in him in the... <laughs> and the, and the, yeah, she's that and always she's that always lightens. The, yeah. It always wasn't just a, it wasn't just a given that they would be together. It kind of evolved mm -hmm. naturally, right? right. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and she, she was great. In yes, the, she was. Yeah, so I thought great. she was really good too. She was trying to push that desk, and she was asking that fat guy to help her. He just kind of stood there, and she's like, "Oh, yeah." Uh, she quickly was like, "I got to do this myself." You yeah. stupid. <laughs> That was awesome. She, uh, <laughs> I just throw this up here. The so her name is Kim Parker, um, and then the Colonel Stanley Maxted Marshall Thompson was a major. Terry Kilburn was the he was supposed to be the what well, was he the security forces, but he acted yeah. like Skippy or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> he just yeah. was like. Hey, it's five o'clock. I'm out of here. You know, like, <laughs> I don't care what the security problems are. Uh, and then uh, the professor is Keniston Reeves, who was a British character actor. And, and I just had to throw at least one picture of uh, somebody sciencing. Yeah, there. he was, very has that similar. leather band on his head. And he's turning away. Mm -hmm. Were you busy, professor? No, I was <laughs> merely sciencing. <laughs> so Kim Parker didn't do that much. She had she only has like thirteen credits. I don't know what she did, yeah. but she was in. Do you remember when we after we did the head? I think maybe it was Gregory Crosby suggested the Man Without a Body, mm -hmm. which I watched. It's it's available. Oh my God, is that bad? She was in there. <laughs> oh, she, she plays a maid. I didn't recognize her because she's she's not in it very much. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway. she looks like she's trying to stab the professor in the back of the neck there. <laughs> and she was in. I'm trying to remember why this came up because I watched this at one point. Fire maidens of outer space. Mm -hmm. Something oh, else we did that? made me <laughs> made me go watch that, and I don't remember. It doesn't Why? take much for you, Jeff. <laughs> it doesn't take much prodding to get you to watch something, anything at any given time. I literally. A real I, cinephile. I, I've got stuff playing all the time. <laughs> there's something on and catches you or not, catches, catches my interest or not. So uh, He was really disappointed that there was no Blu ray <laughs> for it. Yeah, well, there's one. Uh, well, it's on Criterion. There's a DVD. <laughs> Well, Criterion is that it's what, a DVD, fire maidens of, but it's oh, I was talking about fire maidens of whatever. Oh, fire maidens? No, I would you no know, <laughs> Criterion. Yeah, they would. You look though, I know you did. It'd be one of those artistic sites that Dave loves. A twenty four would put out a copy. Dave's doing his taxes. He's not paying. Attention. <laughs> He's not paying. Attention. So here's I, I I I this is partially this is partially just for. Uh, Daphne. So here's the towel scene, just so people know it, it uh -huh. really happened. It did really happen. Yeah. <laughs> Big surprise. And then the scene in the bottom, I just had to ask you about this hat. Did you notice that hat? Yes, I did, of course. Like... And she's got like a priest call. It's, yeah, it's pretty awesome. That's, that's odd, you know? <laughs> yeah. I saw that hat and went, what? That it's like a that? Is that jar a yeah, it's nice and tight up there on top. Yet yeah, square. It, to me, it looks like an Elvis wig, like a really cheap Elvis wig that you get from <laughs> the costume shop. Or, Dracula. <laughs> or like, yeah, or Dracula, or like if you're dressing up as the 50s greaser or something, you know yeah. what I mean? But yeah, the my favorites, what, well, one of my favorite scenes with her was when we are introduced to her and she asks to look at her brother's little notepad. 
and then goes about oh. explaining explaining everything to everybody. <laughs> And then she does the same thing uh, later when, every, you know, when everybody was arguing at the town hall meeting or something about um, why the cow's milk was bad. Or Oh, yeah. Yeah. Smart lady. <laughs> yeah. The they, cows are okay now. <laughs> yeah. So at the, at the beginning of the movie, they put this new Air Force base on the border between the U.S. and Canada, approximately. They're supposed to be partnering on this effort under some kind of atomic energy radar or something i, I don't i don't know or, or radar <laughs> atomic powered radar uh that they're testing and so the townspeople their uh cattle their animals are all messed up and they're not given much milk and so they are they're all blaming it on that so then when somebody turns up dead they just assume it's the same something stuff, you know, yeah all this, <laughs> all this atomic stuff but she uh, her brother dies What's he doing out there at three o'clock in the morning? And uh, <laughs> they get this notepad, and the colonel, who is this guy, ain't too bright. I'm sorry, but the colonel <laughs> is the dumbest character in the movie. You ain't kidding. <laughs> There's a, another part where he tells him that we need more power. Tell him to take more rods out. No, that's all it can take. I said, take more rods <laughs> out. Okay. That's uh, an order. I guess if we have to, we have to. I can hear Scotty on the other <laughs> end. She cannot take no more. I cannot no. take no more rods out, Captain. <laughs> you don't have the Pentagon on your back. Take out more rods. There's a lot of Star Trek. <laughs> it's an order. And the, the atomic <laughs> engineer is just like, you know. <laughs> Here we go again. Uh, anyway. So they they look at this guy's pat as diary or notepad or something, and they see. Uh, I thought they uh, said you were talking about diarrhea. Well, it was all these times. <laughs> the only thing that can stop this is my brother's diarrhea. Is he, does he have any left? Diary. Yeah, diary Journal. entries. <laughs> if you said diary, it, it, drop the diary last. So. I swear, the first time I heard it, it was diary. Your brother still save his so, diary in those mason jars. <laughs> these are all the flight times. Just oh, he must be a spy from somewhere or something, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. What's she this? She says, "Can I see that?" And then she reads on it. <laughs> Helen, less nervous today, quality low. <laughs> Diane, apathetic, quality poor. Mabel, very pert. General improvement. <laughs> she goes, he was logging the milk of these individual cows uh -huh. based on the flight times. And then the other guy goes, yeah, what did you think it was, Colonel? <laughs> Colonel goes, you can go now. Like, he just... He was <sighs> not. He was just not with. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to see some uh, invisible fiends. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> oh, there they are. <laughs> That's what happens to you <laughs> when you and journal that, your diarrhea. The, the one on the bottom is the. Uh, I knew it come in handy one day. The atomic energy, the atomic scientist. So you can tell because he's wearing a ring. Ripper, yeah, a rubber <laughs> jumpsuit with the with the bo <laughs> ventilation holes in the end. Around. Yeah, he does have the, the holes in the end. Yeah. I thought the I mean, actors just, did good though with that hand thing. Yeah. I mean, it was it, it it could definitely have been way sillier. Um, yeah. <laughs> they did a the pretty good job. Didn't leave it up to them. <laughs> Well, I know I did some more of those. What happened to that? Let's see here. Helen, yeah, why did you turn over? <laughs> she did. That's that's the farmer. Just waiting for it. If all he wanted was for her to feed the chickens. So he could eat. Here well, maybe the it. fiends went for a second bite on the back of her neck or something. I don't know. Oh, they probably yep. had to flip her to bite the back of her neck, right? <laughs> There's probably 15 on her right now that we can't exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> you don't know <laughs> so good oh lordy but that it, they were they were all really good at that mm -hmm. i had two or three more of those i don't understand oh this is when they okay so that's when they're invisible i get it now okay jeff is jeff is being stupid 
It oh. happens when you're retired. Uh, so you the guy in the bottom, uh, <laughs> he just got done putting through the orders to remove more rods, but they can't do it. The the things stop them from doing it because they don't want them to shut down the reactor. Mm -hmm. uh, or no, that was to give them more power. This was to shut down the reactor. They just yeah. ordered them to shut down the reactor because they figured out the whole connection. And then this happens. <laughs> <laughs> it crawls up on the top, turns the dials, cranks up the energy, and it becomes visible. Oh, Wouldn't was, it be okay. more advantageous to them to stay invisible? <laughs> yeah, you know, you just you'd think it's harder to sneak up on somebody when you. It's the thirst for power. You just <laughs> literally. <laughs> And that middle shot is when you see there's there's like all kinds of little ones yeah. coming up and down uh -huh. trees and stuff. And Look at all that brain fruit. We're going to have a good crop this year. And then they're trying to sneak in. They, <laughs> they boarded up the window, so they're sticking their tentacles through the window. Uh -huh. That was yeah. cool when uh, the little uh -huh. tail came through and yanked the board. Yeah. board out. Yanked the hammer out, too. Yeah, he yanked the board yeah, out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the that's right. Oh, I tried to find well, we'll keep going. Are, so they used to jump. And <laughs> here they are attacking. Well, there's one crawling on the ground and one, uh, I don't know, lounging on the settee, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, man. And now, Those once well they're done, visible, though, I thought, <laughs> yes. they, they are. They are so well done. I mean, uh -huh. even the little. The way the detail of like when they'd leap at somebody, those little arms would go back and they'd stand up on their little legs and then jet forward. It was there was a lot of attention to that. I mean, you could have just had some guy out of, off screen just throwing these like nerf balls <laughs> at everybody, but but they were really well done. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have now that they're visible. And now we see what they look yes. like when they attack. <laughs> and this is now another guy. Sense. He was he was almost as dumb as the colonel. Uh, he was the deputy mayor, right? That's is that what he was? Yeah, he took yeah. over when the mayor got killed. Uh, yeah. He wasn't much of a. Well, that's why he's deputy, I guess. Oh, I say, boy, well, what are you it... doing around the neck? <laughs> that thing you can tell the thing is like coiling to strike. Yeah, you know? it's like a yeah. snake almost. Yeah, he just stands there. <laughs> You said you need to hit somewhere between my hands. Oh my god. And then nobody so is good. safe. No, not Barbara. And then they all they all died right after this, right? Because they got the she, she just grabbed it, ripped it off. This other guy they ripped oh, the it old off. He, right. died. <laughs> he died anyway. She apparently didn't get her brain sucked, I, yeah. I guess didn't get to it <laughs> and then they have to start killing the brains mm -hmm. now the colonel was a pretty decent shot with his yeah. 45. Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so there it is crawling on the floor on the top picture on the bottom floor that's where it's limping after it's been yeah. shot <laughs> there's like black crud on the carpet yeah and i know it's so funny it's like yeah you missed <laughs> They all were very good shots, man. Brains were going down left and right. They would. They hardly ever yeah. missed with the handguns. Yeah. Although, one thing I noticed was the one guy said, we're almost out of ammunition. And then after that, they shot like 20 more times. <laughs> you know, like, they just kept shooting. Speaking of uh, ammunition, I did have to notice like when the townspeople were going out, the going out to find whatever was in the woods and the guy was like come on let's go and he goes to his car and the number of rifles and guns he was pulling out of that car i felt like it was clowns coming out of a clown car or something it was just rifle after rifle his whole he truck was, was he was handing them out i was like these are all yours what no one has the no one brought their own well he was the uh i think they they called oh uh, the yes local the constable, constable you're point. right yeah, but I, I don't think he should carry around the department's supply of guns in his trunk. But they were well supplied. Too. <laughs> they reminded me of those Jello brain molds they had. Oh yeah. Me. So yeah. I expected like fruit to fly out and everything. Yeah. <laughs> A bunch of well, skittles. 
<laughs> I thought it was kind of neat that they didn't take the easy way out and just have, you know, these guys start accidentally shooting each other. You know, yeah. I just sort of mm-hmm. was thinking, well, this isn't going to end well, but they, uh-huh. they didn't. No, they, 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 yeah, nothing like that happened. So this one here was laying on the table. And when it gets shot, it kind of jumps up in the air. Or else they shot it after it jumped. And it, it, he's he's like, that was a nasty one. Yeah. And I couldn't find any pictures of when they finally shut down the uh, good old Jeff. You notice the hero's name was Jeff. Did, did I did notice that, that of yeah. course. Aren't they always, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, they should be. <laughs> uh, oh, brother. He shuts down the reactor. <laughs> He shuts down the <laughs> reactor, and then they all just collapse and yeah. Uh, yeah. like they fizz away. Went, they they went all evil dead. Yeah, they melt. They did. They did. Do you have a picture of the brain who was? I don't. At the, out of the last gasps, reaches up find, for the I could, TNT. <laughs> I couldn't find one. I could not find one. I was trying to find one, and the, uh, I, I, we belong again. Those um, where they light a few, yeah, just trying to almost reaching the fuse. Yeah. <laughs> yes, only my little arms <laughs> were so a oh, couple yeah. inches longer. <laughs> oh, I love that's it. a great movie. <laughs> it is good. Man. This is if anybody oh, has never it. seen this, man, you got to see it. It's, yeah. it's one of the better so much sci fi horror films mm-hmm. from that era, you know. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't, I don't feel like it gets enough recognition as that though. i mean it's a great great film i think it's a really good movie as opposed uh-huh. to uh one you know it's mtf3 did it uh a take on it uh and i don't think it's a so bad it's a good movie i think it's a good movie some of the yeah. some of the yeah. stuff's a little stilted but the I, that stop motion stuff, yeah. I thought yeah. was really good yeah the stop motion stuff was great and the yeah, the story was good. It was just a an older movie, you know, a different time. <laughs> I'm glad they decided to go with stop motion too. I did. Yeah, you could have went cheap and and did it. Like I said, mm-hmm. Nerf balls being thrown mm-hmm. at everybody's face, but this mm-hmm. this really mm-hmm. brought it to life and made it a little more creepy, you know. Yeah, well, maybe, like the maybe. spine articulated really well, and the yeah. and the little uh, nerves and were moving mm-hmm. around really good. And sorry, Jeff. No. Um, it doesn't matter. I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He did. Uh, Marshall Thompson, the director, was very uh, positive or very complimentary of him. And that uh, he had done some other stuff. You know, he was in another movie we did, Chad. Which one? One of your faves. It, the terror from beyond space. Was he really? Yeah, he was the colonel. Hmm. Um, which he did probably right about the same time. And then uh, he did one, another one for uh, this same production company, First Man Into Space, uh, a couple years later. The thing I kind of remember him from, but he, he did all that stuff. He did... Uh, uh, Perry Mason, Loretta Young show. You guys probably don't know about that. Uh, Wagon Train, Death Valley Days, Flipper. Flipper. Uh, but he shot a movie. He wrote a movie called Clarence the Cross-Eyed Lion. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that a Disney movie? Wasn't that a Disney film? Uh, I, I, I want to say it was. It was I want to say I watched it on the 7 o'clock Sunday Disney movie. Yeah. This is where I saw it. As a kid, I saw it a couple of times. Clarence the Cross-Eyed Lion. <laughs> uh, I mean, it says it was an Ivan Torres production. Hmm. Distributed I, by MGM. So, yeah. I was just going to say, I thought he did a really good job um, acting. I liked, And I liked the character. I thought he was like a warm character and smart. Yeah. I thought he was really good. Yeah, and he wasn't and he, over the top. Mm-mm. And they had really good chemistry with um, Kim Parker as Barbara. He did. So, and the reason I brought up Clarence Cross Eyed Lion is because out of that came a series called Doctari, mm-hmm. 
where he was a doctor in Africa. Hmm. And Doctari is doctor in Swahili, according to the story behind there. Hmm. So uh, by doctor, I mean veterinarian. (laughs) So he became a big animal rights uh, pusher. So this was sort of a passion project, you know. Anyway, the, if you look at the show, the leads, there's him and then his wife, played by Cheryl Miller, and then the next two leads are Judy the Chimpanzee and Clarence the Lion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aaron Moran was in 15 episodes. Ooh. I don't remember anyway. that show. Yeah, that Joni. Was... So, uh, yeah, Marshall Thompson. So that... The two guys that did the effects were kind of odd characters. Rupel, Rup, Rupel and Nordoff. And he said this Nordoff this wanted to be called uh, Baron von Nordoff. <laughs> That's the thing. When you make a bad guy, all you got to do is Baron von in front of whatever. <laughs> well, and he said, it's the, the, bad the guy. producer said, well, we all know von Sternberg wasn't a Vaughn and von Stroheim wasn't a Vaughn. So <laughs> you decide from there whether he was a Vaughn or not. <laughs> and it really doesn't matter either way. You know. Uh, so the two guys, yeah, the two guys that ran the company uh, are uh, Richard Gordon and Charles Vetter. And they got the story. Charles Vetter's brother worked for AIP. And Forey Ackerman pitched the story to... AIP and they turned it down and so this guy's brother sent it over to them hmm. and they thought it was a good one to do so of course they, they changed it but nobody should turn down Forey <laughs> I just this one I just love it just looks like I can picture it going <laughs> when it gets shot you know like and the, all the gurgling the gurgle yeah just when all the jello comes out yep some of the time it kind of looked like caviar or something. You know? so. Yeah, and it had some, had some texture to it. <laughs> lumps. <laughs> Big old lumps. Oh, I got it upstairs. I should attach it to it. I've got one of those. Uh, I've got a stress ball shaped like a brain, you know, uh, uh-huh. a foam ah. squeeze ball. Should attach some little eye stalks. Yes. There you go. A little spine to it. Um, all righty, guys. Uh, what else do we want to talk about on this? Anything else that we missed? The scenes that you thought were cool, or uh, the music was kind of decent too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the one thing I did notice is when she walks out in the towel, it was it was a heart strum, a harp. Some yeah, strum some heart strum. They always do that uh, when there's like, a gorgeous, beautiful woman. <laughs> magic. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, in, in general, for uh, for that big of a budget, and that comes out to that eighty thousand pounds in nineteen fifty eight was would have been about two hundred about three forty thousand dollars. And in today's money, that would have been about, would have been over like 2.3 million. So. Not bad. Not bad. They did. They got a lot out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Still talking about it in 2023. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> well, it's weird because Criterion, maybe they had a Blu-ray and it ran out or something, but all I could get was a DVD. But the DVD okay. is sharp. It's a very yeah. sharp picture. Mm-hmm. I'd. Um, not like I, watch, some... I watched it streaming on Criterion. Um, they didn't have the commentary or anything like that on there, but the picture was really nice. Even the YouTube um, one was not that bad. It was mm. better than I thought mm-hmm. it would be. Um, yeah. I, I, oh, the commentary on the DVD is uh, Richard Gordon and Tom Weaver is kind of interviewing them and they're not necessarily like talking about the movie as shots mm-hmm. come up, but some oh. things kind of coincide, mm-hmm. but it, it takes the exact same. They're talking while the movie's running, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. it, it starts and stops with the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, 
lots of cool stuff about this. Herbert Leader, kind of kind of cool that he did that. Arthur Crabtree did the uh, horror of the Black Museum, mm -hmm. which I just saw on some show the other day about the Black Museum. They were saying, oh, it was a real thing. It was some British detective series. Hmm. They had a thing about the Black Museum. All right. Well, if nobody's got anything else to say. Just watch it. That's what yeah. I, yeah. Make sure you watch it. Dude. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to make my grandson watch it with me one of these days. If you Don't know. make him. <laughs> well, it's like 75, you know, look, 16-year-old kid with a driver's license. You think I get him to sit in one place? You want to watch Fiends Without a Face with me? Here, nah, watch I offered to take it with me. Mash your face into the couch and make him watch it. You little. Well. <laughs> headlock. You know, yeah. I'm not going to tie him up. You know. <laughs> I could I could get him here with uh, Grandma I'll make you some pancakes or something. Bro. Mm, okay, um, there you go. I try, so, I tried to buy him lunch afterwards, and it was like, nah, we need I need to get home and do this and that. And then when I when they got home, I asked them what they were doing, and and they said, oh, just hanging out with Logan, his friend. So, uh, which is cool. That's all cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we do have some feedback. Nice. On our last episode, by the way, since we are sitting here now and we're getting ready to do feedback. Oh, I didn't copy it over. So uh, we're getting ready to do feedback. Daphne wasn't here for The Revenge of Frankenstein. I'm, yeah. So what do you think of The Revenge of Frankenstein? Did you get to watch it? Uh -huh. Thanks. Yeah, I did. Uh, I love Peter Cushing. I love this movie, The Cush. I thought, Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I, I loved his his character building. I wrote down a ton of quotes and ended up recycling my notes afterwards. Some of his quotes were hilarious. Um, I had seen it before a couple times, but this was the first time that I um, like really sat and, and watched it really closely. And um, yeah, I like it. I'm, I wish I could have talked with you guys about it. I was sick. Yeah, we missed you. There's mm, it's thanks. Not a good fall. I know a lot of people are <laughs> sick. Sick. All right. Well, we do have feedback. These are all on episode 165, The Revenge of Frankenstein, which just went live yesterday. Uh Daphne, you want to take that first one from Greg Miller? Sure. Greg who, Miller. By the way, is in Australia. Oh, is he in Australia? Nice. Yep. Um yep. By the way, by my personal reckoning, Revenge of Frankenstein is the best hammer, Frankie. Fra the best hammer, Frankie. Got it. Sorry. Sorry, Greg. Um, with the small scale working very well to focus the story. I remembered very clearly from the first time I saw it as a teen. Yes, I am old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Greg. Greg, Greg, Greg. Appreciate it, Greg. Uh, and then we got one from our buddy, Joel Bartolomeo. Chad, you want to take that? Yeah. Joel says, Joel's a cool guy, by the way. Great film and one of the most interesting directions of franchise, a looser one at that, has ever taken. These Hammer films were my first introduction to going to the movie theater alone. These were often shown as part of triple features on Saturday afternoon at my neighborhood theater. Hmm. Both of these and Universal were my gateway to horror. Everything about these early Hammer films was impeccably done, and I visit them often. Cool, man. Thanks, Greg. Joel. Excellent, Joel. Um, it, it is a different time, you know, because I used to go to double features on Saturday afternoons, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. in the summers they had uh, special horror series like every Wednesday matinee or something. Uh, my friends and I would all go to the theater anyway. But on the other hand... Sitting in my recliner, yeah. watch streaming movie after movie after movie. <laughs> it's okay too. <laughs> I saw Ginger. Right. I saw Ginger Snaps and Dog Soldiers as a double feature. This little theater down the oh, street wow. from me uh, in college, and it was so much fun. But yeah, my butt was sore after <laughs> after being there for that long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. I, uh, uh, Dave, you on you uh, on the feedback there. Uh, I was. Hang on. Let me click back to it. I click back over to see your guys' lovely faces. <laughs> yes, I am. Where are we at? Who are we at? 
Michael Zatz. Mikey Z. Michael Zatz. Yes, I know Michael Zatz. <laughs> uh, I actually saw this as a kid prior to seeing Curse of. I agree with one of you guys. Only one of you, though. Uh, <laughs> but this was a more accessible on TV than some of the others in the series, even Hammer Films in general. Uh, he goes on to say, Michael Gwynn elicits so much sympathy as the resurrected Carl. Uh -huh. Having experienced a cranial trauma, I emphasize with his characterization and understand his malformative, malformative existence. As pointed out by the Gru crew, when he crashed the party, it is reminiscent of the scene over a decade later from Frankenstein, the true story. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Lukush is fantastic here as the conniving, mm -hmm. manipulating Dr. Steen, uh, Dr. Franks, oh hell, Dr. <laughs> Frankenstein. His obsession and single-mindedness is on full display in this one. And last but not least, too bad Daphne wasn't here for this one. Her perspective Aww. would have been interesting to hear. Another great Hammer discussion in the books. Keep it classic, you sexy bastards. <laughs> I, I had that last part. Yeah. That was, he was talking about Chad. And, uh, <laughs> you won't mind but, me taking oh, that liberty. No. Yeah. I'll get it where I can get it. <laughs> I'll see people notice when we're not here. You know. I, I have thank, to agree. I you. loved... Um, Carl. I loved the actor who played Carl and he was so moving and I loved how, you know, Peter, Peter Cushing played such a cold, such a cold, he did. mean, <laughs> cruel man. Um, yeah. But it, that, that Carl really was the, was the person he, he did incredible. The guy who played Carl. That was very good. All righty. I agree. And now. Thank you. We have a very, very long one from Jerry Chandler. So one of the problems we had with The Revenge of Frankenstein was there was a credit for a writer named Herford Janes. And some sources said Herford Janes was Jimmy Sangster. And some sources said it's not. And I started trying to track it down. And during that time, I inter one of the people I asked was Jerry because I figured he knew. Uh, so let's, let's, who wants to read this? We it's may have turn, to take Jim. turns. Huh? It's your turn. What'd you oh, okay. I'll do it. Have at it. From Jerry Chandler, regarding the writer mystery, the small ton of stuff I texted Jeff from the time I looked into it previously and hated myself for going down that rabbit hole back then and then Jeff's question or comment about information like this and the internet <laughs> <laughs> he says it ain't, I said something about that that stuff gets copied all over the internet and pretty soon that's the thing you see it ain't the internet says Jerry well not just the internet the stuff starts somewhere and continues to exist for decades whether there's an internet or not King Kong versus Godzilla which I could have sworn you did on Classic Era but I can't find it now we haven't <laughs> Had one of those trivia issues for decades. I have or have had dozens of trivia books from the 70s and 80s that all have a question and an answer referencing how Toho had Godzilla win in the Japanese version, but a different ending for the U.S. and U.K. cut of the film where Kong won. I think I was already in my 30s before that falsehood started to finally get widely debunked. Yet, even now, I run into people using that as a trivia question at conventions, incorrect answer and all. Bill Mulligan and I talked online about that way back when, as we were just getting to know each other. He figured it was likely sourced to something Forey Ackerman wrote in Famous Monsters of Filmland because he seemed to recall seeing it there. But Forey or not, the general idea stands. Most of the things we point to now as the publications that chronicled our beloved horror genre were, in reality glorified fan publications they may have gotten tons of stuff right but they got a lot wrong as well even ackerman but the well-known and popular ones eventually became the archive of horror knowledge to later writers fortunately long-running errors like the kong versus godzilla things are easier to later catch and correct stuff like who really wrote the novelization of the revenge of frankenstein i think those are becoming trivia where the truth of the correct answer is lost to time not that our favorite fandom is anywhere close to lost my place. Take a breath. 
Have a drink of water. <laughs> not that our favorite fandom is anywhere <laughs> close to alone in this. Not only has the same thing happened to sci-fi fans, but they've found this exact same problem with some school textbooks over the last few decades. And I also now hate Jeff for making me start thinking about this again after finally getting it out of my system and well away from it the last time. Um, in actuality, what he told me was he was at a conference and the panel got asked that question and the guys on the panel argued heatedly about it. And so the jury got went down the rabbit hole. And uh, at the end of the long piece of information he sent me about it, he said, and what I finally decided is I wish to hell I'd never gone to that panel. <laughs> <laughs> So now he continues. As for the movie, The Revenge of Frankenstein. Love this movie. It's one of those sequels where you can very easily argue that it's better than the film it follows. That actually seems to be a trend with older Frankenstein franchises, since there's a legitimate argument that Bride of Frankenstein was a better film than Frankenstein. Other than that, you guys covered just about everything I would have said about the movie. Fun one, guys. Well, wow. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. That's a compliment. We said everything he would have said. I don't know about that. but So I finally reached out to Dick Clementson, a little shop of horrors about this guy. And he said, George Baxt, who was a writer that did some dialogue fixing and stuff for Hammer, uh, said that there is a Hereford James and it was not Jimmy Sangster. So hmm. other than that, we don't know what the hell He'd be the guy on. that would know if anybody did. Mm hmm Yes, that's that's I'm going with what he says. Uh, both of them. All right, well, that's it. There's plenty of ways to stay in touch. Appreciate it, Jerry. Appreciate it, uh, Mikey Z, Joel, and Greg. Good to hear from you all. Um, it's easy to stay in touch. We love our comments. Um, all you got to do is put a comment in on the uh, Gruesome Magazine YouTube page or send a Feedback to feedback at gruesomemagazine.com or comments on the Gruesome Magazine's H&R and DOH podcast Facebook group or at the website, gruesomemagazine.com. So, um, or Patreon. Please, please make comments. Yeah, and we do have a <laughs> Patreon page, uh, Patreon group that you can... Um, make contributions uh, one time or, or monthly or however you want to do it uh, to help pay for the cost of doing the podcast. We don't get paid. We, uh, but it does hey, cost money. I, I've been doing this for like five <laughs> years and I keep getting told the checks in the mail, checks in the mail. What do you mean we don't get paid? I'll quit complaining. I, I've doubled your salary at least twice. I think. Oh, okay. Then I'm like that. General now. Okay. then. <laughs> Anyway, it's amazing how many costs there are hidden behind podcasting. You got to pay Apple, you got to pay uh, hosts, you got to pay, uh, you know, servers and all that stuff. So, anyway, um, and you get your episodes a little bit earlier. Yeah, you do. And and when you do that, you do get some stuff. We've Doc's been doing some uh, video quizzes, and uh, we also you get the DOH podcast a day or two after they're recorded. Otherwise, you have to wait like uh, about two weeks. Two weeks. Half, two weeks. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, that's it for this episode. But every two weeks, we'll be focusing on a specific film between 1920 and 1969. Next up is one chosen by me. And we're doing The Frozen Dead. Oh, yes. Ooh, the one about <laughs> the frozen Nazis. Nazis. <laughs> I'm sure I'll have a little bit to say about that. <laughs> and I'm just I already don't you, agree with it. It's from the written by the same guy that wrote this yes. and it. And mm -hmm. uh, it involves a head sitting on a table. Perfect. Like <laughs> when you said we will have done all three of these, I was like, I don't remember ever hearing you guys talk about well, I didn't put frozen it in the notes, Nazis. but I put it in the <laughs> yeah. I put it in the email, but anyway, oh yeah, we are doing Yay. frozen. Uh, there's a pretty good copy on YouTube. That's about the only place I could find it. Uh, I, I think there might be one on archive.org too. I'm not sure, but Sweet. I'm looking forward to that because I watched it the other day and it, it's uh, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Dana Andrews 
trying to do a German <laughs> accent. It's, it kind of fades in and out. <laughs> this is from the guy that did Curse of the Demon. So anyway. All right. That's it. That's all we got. Dave, you have to stop talking so much. <laughs> I just like listening to the discussion. So that's uh, it's good. I always enjoy coming on this podcast. So thank you for having me. Thanks for being Thanks, here. Dave. Man. It's good to have you here. Appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate it, buddy. Um, uh, Dave always brings a sense of uh, dignity uh, to the show that normally <laughs> we don't have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sense of decorum. Yeah. It classes the joint up a little bit. <laughs> well, I, it, it gives us some historical cred. <laughs> OG. Uh, all right. That's it. Catch us again here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the classic era. As only decades of horror can do it. Thanks, one and all. Hopefully, Doc will be back. Catch us. Uh, say goodnight, guys. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Nazis. Get me out. <laughs>